Listen, game development is hard, and art, I think, is amongst one of the hardest aspects of game development. Now, we all know on this channel, I'm really not a good artist, or really an artist at all. Please refer to this Bob Ross painting I made as evidence. Now, what is a lowly indie game dev like myself who is bad at art to do? Well, that's where the wonderful website of Fiverr comes into play. And there are two things I have. One of them is a lack of art skill, and the other one is disposable income. And every great indie game needs a great indie game logo. So I paid four artists over $200 to help me create a logo for my Steam art for my indie game called Castlemancer. How did they turn out and can I do any better? This video is sponsored by Brilliant, but more on that later. And please wish list Castlemancer over on Steam. It really helps me out. Also, forgive my voice, I have a bit of a cold. For those that don't know, Fiverr is basically a database type thing of freelancers and gigs for pretty much anything you can imagine. From coding, to music, to business. But I think one of Fiverr's great strengths is the artists on there. There are literally so many talented artists, I had a hard time choosing which ones to go with. You can find all of the artists and the links to their Fiverr pages in the description below. They are all very talented and did amazing work. I will also rank all my favorites toward the end of the video. So generally with art commissions, you have to provide some sort of context. So I'll include the brief descriptions and context I gave each of the artists so that you kind of know what they were going off of. You'll also be able to vote in a community poll on which you think is the best design. The first commission was with the artist Denny Saputra and cost about $57. And here is the context I provided. I'm releasing a 2D pixel art video game. The game is called Castlemancer and is medieval slash fantasy themed. The premise of the game is that you are defending your magical castle from an enemy siege and use a variety of spells to defend it. Therefore, including elements like castle walls, towers, and or magical elements would be great for the logo. The style should be flat 2D with cartoony slash RPG slash fantasy style or themes. I also provided a rough design I created myself initially. So here is what Denny got back to me with and I just asked for a version without the castle in the middle. It goes without saying but obviously it's really good and looks like a really professional logo. And at this point I wasn't really sure what art direction I really wanted to go in for the logo and I wanted to leave a lot of creative freedom for the individual artists. In terms of fitting the theme it definitely gives off a medieval or magical vibe but also I think the red color and font make it slightly feel like a vampire game. Also, one thing I had to keep in mind was that the logo had to be very eye-catching and readable, because this is shown as thumbnails on Steam. And if I have learned anything from roughly four years on YouTube, is that for thumbnails, you need simple and big text so that it's readable on small devices. Unfortunately, you could have the best artwork as your Steam logo, but if it's not visible what is going on at a small scale, people won't click on it. And if they don't click on it, they won't find out if it's a game they'd want to buy. So the readability aspect is huge for me. And with this design, I'm not sure it would be super readable at a small resolution, even though it does look super professional. Now the next design is from the very talented artist, Henry Rahadra, and cost about $45. And the context I gave him was, I'm working on a game called Castlemancer. It's a pixel art fantasy style strategy game. For the style, something lighthearted and cartoony to emphasize the non-seriousness of the game. Also incorporating fantasy themes like castles, wizards, magic, knights, etc. would be great. For colors, I'm thinking like bright blue or purple to emphasize the magic side of the game. I'll attach a very basic logo I made, but you definitely don't have to stick to anything like that. So he got back to me with this awesome pixel art design. I really like the shades of blue and the little pixel art castle on the letters. I also really like the background he provided that really matched well with the logo. He also provided menu buttons in the same font, which I thought was really cool of him. This one I think is a very different vibe from the previous one, and I think it helped me move towards an art direction. I really like the pixel art aspect of the logo, and I feel like generally that fits the theme of Castlemancer a little bit better compared to the previous previous logo, which is a non-serious pixel art strategy game about defending your magical castle. But now you see, the one thing with pixel art logos and text is that they're not super readable on small resolutions. So that's really the only thing I'm slightly apprehensive about. Again, I love the style and art of it, but how clickable and readable is this when put side to side with other games on Steam? But overall, great job, Hendry. The third logo was from the artist Zahria A and cost about $55. And the context I gave them was, title of the game is Castlemancer. Castlemancer is a 2D pixel art strategy deck building card game. You play as the Archmage of a castle that is 
currently under siege. You have to play cards to replenish resources, defeat invaders, and wither down the opposing army. For the style, a cartoony style as the game is pretty lighthearted and non-serious. For the colors, I was thinking of bright blue or purple paired with maybe yellow or gold to emphasize the magic side of the game, but open to whatever you think will look good. They also asked for some screenshots of the game and logos from similar games as reference, which I thought was a really cool addition to make the logo a little more tailored to my specific genre of game. So I attached some screenshots in the logos from the games Wild Frost and Across the Obelisk that I think had logos that I was leaning more towards. This was the initial logo they got back to me with, which again looks great and super professional. I wasn't totally sure about it, so I asked if they could make the font a bit thicker to be more readable and make the design slightly less 3D. And this was the final logo. I really like the crest with the castle towers in the middle. I think that looks super cool. I also really like the pink glow around the text and the font, which I think emphasized the magical aspect again of the game really well. Though again, as much as I do like the font, I think at a smaller resolution or from far away, it can be kind of hard to read because it is generally on the thinner side of fonts. This is partly my fault because the title Castlemancer is already kind of a long and not a real word, so your brain doesn't immediately recognize it, also further making it harder to distinguish. Overall, I think it's giving a similar vibe to the first logo, but more of a magical theme and less of a vampire theme. And lastly was the most expensive logo and the most niche. So this commission was for specifically a pixel art logo from the talented Edward C and cost about $71. The context I gave him was I am making a 2D pixel art card game called Castlemancer. The setting is that you are the archmage of a castle that is currently under siege and it's your job to defend the castle by playing various spells. The game will be uploaded to Steam so the logo should be easily readable at a small resolution but eye-catching. You can see the Steam page here. And I also attached the Wild Frost and across the Obelisk logos as reference as well. So we came back with two styles that I think both look amazing. And the fact that it's a relatively high resolution pixel art is really, really cool. The first one pops a bit more with the high impact font and big drop shadow, making it a bit more readable. But the second one I was really drawn to and I thought fit the theme really well. Immediately, I thought it was a really good start, but I wasn't totally sold on the colors. So I asked if he could take the second design and make the background like a castle wall with a sword going through the back. And he definitely did not disappoint. This pixel art is super high quality. The design looks really good, the colors are really popping, the overall theme I love. My only gripe again with pixel art fonts is that it can be slightly hard to read, but I knew that going in because this artist specializes in pixel art logos. So those are the four logos from the four very talented artists. In total, it cost about $227 for these four commissions, and I really like how we got a bunch of different themes and styles throughout the different logos. Now, I love them all for different reasons, but if I had to rank them in terms of what I think fits the theme of Castlemancer the best, and this is not saying any of them are bad, it's just what I think I like the most for the theme. So starting in reverse, I would probably put the first logo last. It looks really good again, but I'm just not sure if that's kind of the theme I was leaning towards. Then I would put the third logo, which was similar to the first, but I really like the addition of the castles in the middle. Again, I'm just not really sure if a 3D-ish logo is kind of what I was feeling, but I really like how we got a bunch of different themes from the different artists. Now for second and first, it's tough. Second place, I'd probably put the blue pixel art logo. I really like this one and I think it fits the theme and tone really well, but could prove kind of difficult to read on Steam. And in first, I would put the Castlemancer high resolution pixel art logo because it looks just so well crafted. And I absolutely love the castle wall pattern as the background combined with the sword going through the back. Those are the final rankings, but I also have to throw my hat in the ring. Now, I'm not nearly as talented as these amazing artists are, but I'm semi-decent at graphic design, at least I like to think so, which inevitably on Steam kind of matters, because it kind of got me thinking that on Steam, the things that are shown to you, the Steam capsule art, are kind of like YouTube thumbnails. You want people to click on them. So I created this Steam art. I wouldn't really consider it a logo. So this is currently what's up on my Steam page. To create this, I used Canva, which is a great software for graphic design and I actually use it for all of my thumbnails as well. I'm really indecisive, so I wasn't really sure what theme I wanted to try to make. So I looked at some similar games for reference and found that having a character visible in the art felt like it made it more intriguing or clickable versus just having a plain logo. I realized I didn't want it too complex in the background because it would make it pop less, which I noticed on some of the reference art I had looked at as well. So I ended up with this, which I think I'm currently happy with as it conveys the theme of a 
wizard and castles, but still simple. And the text I think is pretty readable, but I don't know if it totally fits the pixel art theme. So that was kind of my main hesitation when deciding which logo to go with, because I love the pixel art logos because my game again is pixel art, but pixel art inherently is kind of hard to read. But let's say you're comfortable with the art and maybe want to develop your programming and technical skills. This video's sponsor Brilliant.org can help. Brilliant is one of the best ways to learn computer science and math topics interactively. Brilliant features thousands of lessons covering a huge range from basic math and computer science to advanced AI and data science. Plus, there are new lessons added monthly. Now listen, I know creating game art is hard enough. Let Brilliant's interactive courses in computer science and math help take some of the stress out of learning the technical side of game development, with even more advanced topics like neural networks. So if you're committed to continuously developing skills as a professional, Brilliant can be a vital tool. Brilliant also has bite-sized courses that are designed for busy people, especially if for all those part-time game devs like myself out there. Brilliant's interactive nature makes it more effective in learning and building analytical skills. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash bite of Michael or click on the link in the description below. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. And thank you to Brilliant for supporting the channel. So I'm still unsure. Again, I'm gonna post a poll, so let me know what you guys think. And how would you design the Steam art or logo? Do you like the pixel art theme more or the 3D logo? Or do you like the kind of simplistic flat theme I put together? And if you have an idea for what the logo for Castlemancer should look like or you have some good ideas, definitely send me an email and maybe we can potentially collaborate. And if it ends up working out and we share kind of a similar vision and I think the logo looks good, I'd obviously compensate you. Again, you can find all of the very talented artists in the description below. And again, each of them absolutely crushed it, and I'm happy with all of them. That's all for me. We do a Bob British accent at the end of every video. Let me know what you guys think, and remember to vote in the community poll on what you think is the best logo design, and wishlist my game Castlemancer over on Steam. Thank you, and hopefully I see you in another one. Bye bye